Okay, so now we're going to do the data store. Data store is our primary database in App Engine. Uh, it is what's called a NoSQL database. That means it doesn't follow a convention with SQL. In particular, that means it doesn't do joins across tables. We'll see what that means while working with it. Um, in general, that's going to mean that's a little less flexible. It's not quite as powerful in terms of what it can do for queries, but if you don't need that power, it's uh, way easier to use in SQL. So, um, you know, you can read here at the uh, cloudgoogle.com slash app engine slash docs go app data store, which is under the storing data data store overview. And it describes in detail uh, things about the data store, no plan downtime, you know, that's nice, atomic transactions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is important, the high availability, and it's very scalable based on a Google product called Bigtable, which is really interesting technology. but. Um, basically means that, uh, you know, if you have an app with 10 users or if you have an app with 10 million users, you shouldn't have to change your code. It scales appropriately. Um, now, it may cost you money, but you don't have to reinvent the wheel or anything. Uh, and here's our friend Paxos. I think I briefly talked about it once, but you can look that up if you want to delve into some heady computer science. Um, so, but it's actually really easy to use from Go, the data store is, and so we'll look at some examples. Uh, but the basic structure of data store is you have an entity, and an entity is like an object, it's like a thing, it's a particular one thing, okay? And an entity has a kind, which is like a type. So, in this example down here, they have an entity which is an employee. So the employee, Joe Citizen, his kind is an employee. So that's just like in Go when we make a struct, this is like the kind, the type, and this is uh, the entity, one particular instance of the type. Um, and we have these two kinds of keys. There's a complete, uh, a key and an incomplete key. Uh, we'll see what the difference is, but notice here the, the kind here is the string you put in here. Um, so it's not based on the name of the type, it's based on what you tell it. And so the idea here is that I'm gonna pass in the context, the kind, and then I'm going to, that's going to be key, and I'm going to put the employee into that key. So just like we did with memcache, where we had a key and a value, similar with the data store, here the value is an entity that we're going to be putting in there. So the data store works on these entities, and it breaks up an entity into its fields, okay, its properties, right? So this, in ent uh, this entity has a property called name of Joe Citizen. And it has a, the ability to query based on those properties. Okay. So I can put something at a certain key, I can get it back, I can delete it, just like I do with Metcache. But in addition, I can query, I can say, get me all of the employees who have the name just as. Okay. Or, that's probably not typical, what would be more typical, give me all the employees who have the role manager. So I can query everything, I can get a list of them. Um, and so that's how we generally are going to use the data store, is we're going to use these basic operations and then also the query capabilities. And it's a pretty, uh, I mean, it's, it's not a super complicated, um, like the number of things we do with it are, are pretty simple. Uh, but it can get a little hairy to, to work with if you need to do certain things. And we'll see how to see some of that later. Uh, but, but the basic operations are pretty straightforward. Um, the other thing that uh, an entity has is what's called an ancestor. And so, in addition to the, the, the key, you can have an ancestor, and that's what this bit here is, I think. And so, um, maybe we'll see some examples, but the idea here is that there's often a relationship between one entity and another. For example, a user might have many posts. In our blog, we might have one user with many posts, right? And so the ancestor of a post, or a photo, is user. That's that user's photo. And so we can also query based on that ancestor. So I could say, give me all the photos that have this ancestor. And what I'm saying there is, give me all the photos that belong to this user. Everybody follow that? Um, so in addition to just getting something by a key, we can query based on fields, and we can query based on the ancestor. And that's actually about it. Uh, we can also order things, but that's So you can query by, uh, by fields, and you can query by key, and you can query by uh, ancestor. Yeah. And then the ancestor
ancestor again if you had a bunch of photos? Say that once more. Yeah, so if you have a bunch of photos, the ancestor would probably be the user who had their, their photos, right? That user's photos. Um, now, remember, these are relationships we invent, that we're modeling data, and so it's up to us to come up with those conditions. Um, for example, we don't have to use the ancestor. I can make a field called owner and put the value of the owner there, uh, and that will work too. Yeah. So there's flexibility about how we structure the data. The other place that you'll see it is the key. Uh, an incomplete key is meaning I'm going to generate, App Engine give me a number, it's going to generate the key. It's going to make one of them. Yeah. Um, but if I give it an incomplete key, it can be a string, and I can define it. So the key might be the user ID or something. Uh, but I can also make user ID field and do it that way. So there's flexibility about how we structure the data. We'll see examples that help us to think, oh, that's how I should do it. Uh, but the basic idea is that you have this entities, they can have relationships with each other via ancestors, but otherwise they're just fields. They're just properties, okay? Queryable properties. Um, so the important thing about that is uh, the properties are indexed. And what that means is that they can be queried efficiently. Okay, so if you imagine I have 10 million users, and I want to find all the users that have the manager role, if I just went to the list and looked through every single one of them, that'd be very inefficient, okay? Yeah. That'd be an expensive query. But if they're indexed, that means it can quickly get that subset. Okay? And so these will be indexed. And that's why that's the, the why the importance of the big table part is it makes it possible to have this huge amount of data spread over lots of machines, but to be able to do those queries efficiently. So. And does the indexing happen on every field that we do that's associated with a type? So technically, there's an index YAML file that you put in your okay. project. Um, and then you say, say in there what you want indexed and how you want it indexed. Um, but it so happens that if you're writing your code using the development server and you do these queries, it will add the indexes for you. Mm -hmm. So it'll make that file, it'll update it. Okay. And so in general, you shouldn't have to modify that manually. It should do it for you. But it does, these, in other words, if you never query on a property, you don't index it. Because it's not some because indexes yeah. can be expensive. Yeah. I mean, literally they cost you money if you have like a lot of data. And so uh, because they have to store it and stuff. Whereas if it's just a plain property, they don't have to store it in the index, that can save you money. Um, and so you should only index the things you're gonna query on. And so, you know, maybe I never index the higher date because I never query on the higher date. I don't care about that. Uh, but maybe I do query on the full. But that's like a subtlety we don't have to worry too much about. The basic idea is uh, we're going to start playing with it just to get a feel for it. Um, but it, it's pretty pretty simple. It's not too complicated as a as an idea. So uh, every entity has a kind. Uh, it has an identifier. That identifier can be a string. That's the key. Uh, string or an int. It can be a number or a string. Uh, and we can ask the App Engine to make one for us. So I can add a user and I can say this is user one two three four. Or I can add a user and say, you make up the ID for me, and it will do that, okay? And the difference there is, if I tell it, that's a key. If I don't tell it, that's an incomplete key, right? Because it's not been completed yet. It's not completed until I put it in. And then it's complete. Um, and, and then we have ancestors, okay? And that's the basic structure of the entries. So maybe we should look at an example just to get a feel for, for that. Um, so let's close all this stuff. And then in day five, I'm going to make a folder, and we'll call this data store example. OK. And then I'll copy my app YAML. Um, so in this example, we want to show three things. We want to show putting, getting, and listing, or querying, okay? So let me get rid of all this code. Um, so I want to structure this as a, a fairly typical app might be structured. And so what I want to do is I'm going to make index, so if I go to slash, that will be the list of things. then I want to be able to, um, 
So what do we want to store? Let's make a dictionary, okay? And so the idea of a dictionary is I have a word, I want a definition, and I want to be able to add a word in the definition, and I want to be able to see one and see the list of. So we're going to make our own online dictionary, okay? And so we might have a words, slash words endpoint, and if I uh, post to that, I'm adding a word. Um, so let's say handle words. So if checked out a method, this is post. Then I'm adding a word, and we will get the uh, the word from form value. If you remember that, we'll call it word, and we will get the definition. Same way, and then to do the data store, we need to uh, create a context. So I'm creating a context. And then we'll use data store put. So let's look at the docs for that. So it's in the app engine data store. Um, and it talks all the basic types and stuff like that. But, uh, we need to create a key. And, and what I'm going to do is create uh, an incomplete key. So I'm going to say key is data store dot incomplete. New incomplete key, yeah, new incomplete key. Um, and so the key is, you pass it first to context, because remember, we're always passing the context around. And then the next thing is the entity. So let's call the entity word, and then no ancestor, okay? So context, the entity type, kind, and then you know, the kind. Um, and then we can put in that key, right? And so they show that right here. So I need to create the entity, which means I need to create a type for that. So I'm going to call type word struct. What, what should happen? Say that again? The, this guy. What, what, should it, oh, what should it have? It should have yeah. word, um, word yeah. word definition. Yeah. Definition I was trying to think of some word other than word. Yeah, that's maybe like word. Like word, word. I was like, word, uh, word. Uh, what's the word for word? <laughs> what's a... Uh, in, in a definition list, a DL, you guys ever make a definition oh, list? Oh, yeah, yeah. TD. It's, it's, it's uh, uh, DL, DD, and yeah. DT. What's the T stand for? Term. Term. Term, term yeah. There you go. I don't know if that's better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we create the entity is um, a word, right? And so the word is the word. Yeah, make it term. <laughs> is that too confusing? Yeah. Definitions yeah, that's better. Thank you. Um, and then here we're going to get the error out of there. So CTX key entity. Uh, yeah, that's probably what we're going to do. If there's an error that could happen if maybe for some reason we couldn't reach it or something like that. Um, but that's unlikely to happen. Uh, so we've, we've put it into the data store, okay? And maybe this is enough to get started, though what we're gonna have to do is if it's not, uh, again, we need to draw a form. So I'm just gonna do, do uh, <coughs> this, this way. Um, uh, obviously, normally you'd wanna use a, uh, a template. So I'm just going to be explicit. Uh, it's slash words, and then it has uh, inputs. So name is term. That's the term, and then maybe a text area. Name is uh, definition. Okay, that, that should be enough. 
enough, right? Let's see what we get. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. Otherwise, it's hard to submit a form. Um, Fine thing is, like, well, maybe I don't know something. Maybe you don't need to submit for some reason. You don't. Maybe maybe you just if you're in an input, you hit enter, it submits it. Oh, yeah, it but you can't do that in the text area. Or a phone. Yeah, phones. Uh, that's a good point. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go to data store example. Serve that guy. Oops. I haven't implemented anything for slash, so that's not going to do anything yet. But words. Plain text. I didn't close the text area. All right, that is the ugliest form ever. So, cat is a cat. Yeah. Oddly enough, that's weird. So what does that refer to? Oh, that's just a string. Yeah. The string lowercase employee, but type uppercase the E employee. You think that matters? Some programming languages get really uh, annoying about their capitalization. I think you're supposed to be able to do this. You don't have to create the... Uh, Oh, maybe you do. Um, the uh, Hello World tutorials about data store uh, in it. Yeah, maybe we'll look at that. I'm, maybe I'm skipping some step that's vitally important. Um, yeah, using the data store. It's loading. Um, type that. And uh, yeah, you're supposed to be able to keep it. There's the capital. Yeah, it shouldn't matter. That shouldn't matter so much. You're not, it doesn't look like your password is the value of password. Doing something wrong. Maybe this does matter. Oh, what am I doing wrong now? Oh, they kind of match. You can't do a mix and match there. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with this. This may take me a bit to figure out. So maybe we should come back when I uh, five minute break. <laughs> Dude, I got an email.